I was lonely when she first arrived. In a house so huge, it spent some time in the 80s being flats, then bought by a man who turned it back. Filled it with paintings, chandeliers, and mismatched lampshades, but in a way that wasn't kitsch. From an attic room shaded by the street trees in the summer, I heard feet press floorboards, but rarely got a chance to match a face to the sound. A month worth of evenings sat chin on knees amongst packed up boxes, watching David Tennant, Doctor Who, and drinking till I fell asleep. I was really angry at my job in a student's union, that I had hoped had helped change my bit of the world, but actually just saw me filling in endless Excel spreadsheets under the glare of a power mad student president who had a thing for hockey boys. The night the new flatmate was due to arrive, I set myself against her in the private school she worked in. I went to the grapes and I slagged her off till closing time. Woke, vomit-throated, to discover that I'd scrawled her a note off in her free reign over my shampoo and that she had thanked me in her neat boarding school handwriting. We bonded over my lack of potatoes and her having some fried to blue cheese. And the next night, Noki and Palmer ham, and I told her I was a little bit intimidated when I took my beans on toast out the microwave. And she laughed and said, well, you learnt variety in dinners when your parents abandoned you age six and only reappeared when you won a lacrosse match. She was amazed that I would stand up and speak my secrets to strangers. And she said she had to see this. And unlike anyone else who's ever said that, she actually did. She came to every gig for a year. Even the weird ones, an egg cafe with a man in his pants blacked up and said he was the middle of a butterfly who had lost his wings. <laughs> and she always sat in the front row and always cheered the loudest, even when nobody else did. We drank the limoncello my sister had given me in the pantry as I filled her in on seeing our landlord naked. And when she laughed so hard it came out of her nose and made her cry, I bent double, gripping the cupboards, had to run to the toilet and only just made it in time. She taught kids who paid for the privilege. She brought home piles of marking alongside £100 vouchers to canapé bars in return for moving Benedict up a set in maths. She laughed at their bribes and we had one of the best nights of our lives, stumbling on so much champagne that both of, both of us agreed wasn't as tasty as a pint of Strongbow, but fuck it, it was free. And in the dim light, stuffing as many puff pastry things in as we could before anyone could get the chance to take them away, we guessed at who the mistresses were. And those that weren't, whether they were still having sex or just going home to lie in beds and notes, keeping themselves warm and satisfied inside and the knowledge that their stocks were doing fine. I went to the toilet six times that night just to use the waterfall taps and the dice and dryers to pout in the complimentary lights and the floor to ceiling mirrors and when the voucher was dry we toddled up to Alma to Cuba and bought glass buckets of wine sat in a candlelit booth as feather tail flamenco dancers moved around us met men with bad shoes who didn't stand a chance but we took their cocktails and compliments and laughed when they couldn't see we were laughing at them and then swapped our heels for the trainers and our handbags slipped into the basement bar of Hebe's danced to the Motown and bam, with men we wouldn't have minded taking home. Slipped a pill on the dance floor with a can of red stripe and thought we were literally the best fucking people in there. Oh, with moves like this, we were great. We didn't even speak, we just punched the air and hit our heads and other people's sweat on the ceiling when the beat of Proud Mary kicked in. And even though she said she hated the stuff when we were sober, every blind drunk night we stumbled back from, she pestered me to roll a spliff and then laughed so hard she couldn't tell me what was funny and made me dance to Outcast. And when the landlord banged on the ceiling below, we turned it up because he was a perv who would come onto both of us. And in the always darkness of winter, when it snowed so hard, the buses stopped running and I had no idea how I was going to get home and I was tearful anyway, I'd had the shittiest day, I hadn't met targets and I got a bollocking and my shoes had a hole in and my, my feet had got wet when I'd gone to get lunch. She appeared outside work in her maroon estate car, told my boss to fuck off, she could park where she liked. And when we got home, she hanged her speakers down the middle of the staircase and played Things Can Only Get Better by D. Ream on repeat. She had money and land and was so privileged she didn't need to understand politics. She said she loved Coronation Street because it was a side life she'd never seen. She dropped her marking and everything when I came in with a face on, let me get into her bed in the middle of the night when it had all gone wrong and another one had left. She got out the emergency wine that we drank through a straw as she soothed my bruised ego with stories of her Match.com phase. And when I ran for re-election in the student union, and Fat Darren ran a hate campaign against me with the tagline, stick up for the brothers, she was the only one to stay up all night, traipsing around town, taking their posters down. And when the cheers went up from the banter boys on the other side of the bar at the news that he'd beaten me, she squeezed my hand because we both knew that meant I wouldn't be able to pay rent in two months' time. 
And she said it wouldn't be the same with anyone else, so began to look for jobs elsewhere. Found one in Africa. And on the morning that I closed the door on that empty attic room, I shut my eyes and I didn't cry until I was safely down the M6. And sometimes, when I stumble back to my mum's house, trip over a cat, I pour myself another wine and have a one-woman Tina Turner party she'd be proud of. Thank you. Woo!